embrace the vision of the scripture. The most recognized scriptures in America are found within the Bible and the Quran. I believe that we should utilize both holy books by embracing the vision found throughout the scriptures. Let's start with the book in the Bible. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The vision being referred to here is about receiving divine communication from God, whether it be from a dream, revelation, or prophecy. When we examine this scripture, we can see the same word used in other passages in the Bible. These references give understanding to the right exegesis of the word vision being used here. An example is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, saying, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Likewise, the same word is used to introduce prophetic books of Isaiah, Obadiah, and some of the visions of Daniel. From these scriptures, we can determine the meaning of the word vision and see how to apply it to Proverbs 29 and 18. Ultimately, the term used in Proverbs implies a lack of God's revelatory word. Lacking God's word leaves the masses lost with no vision to embrace. The lack of knowledge of God and his vision for humanity causes many to perish. In the Old Testament, God was still giving new revelation to his people. But now we are a blessed people because we now have all the books of the Bible and other holy books accessible to us. Another holy book that speaks about vision is the Holy Quran. The passages in the Quran and the scriptures in the Bible should be examined using a holistic approach. Accepting both texts as holy gives the spiritual seeker a full understanding of embracing the vision of the scriptures delivered to man from God. Here's what is said in the Quran about vision. Surah chapter 6 verse 103. No vision can grasp him, but his grasp is all over all vision. He is above all comprehension, yet is acquainted with all things. Here again, we see how vision is related to God. No vision can fully grasp the Most High God because he is above all comprehension. Although we can't grasp him or have a full understanding of Allah, he is over any vision we can imagine of him. Meaning, nothing can come to pass without God's permission. Again, even though no vision can grasp God, we can see him in all things. We can see him in the trees, the oceans, the mountains, and all the other things we can observe in this realm. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, we see the importance of a vision when Krishna, God, says, Quote, the man of vision and I are one, close quote. This scripture alone tells us that having a vision will help us to merge with God. That is why as spiritual seekers, we must always remember to embrace the vision provided for us in scripture. The vision that God is above all and in, in all. The vision that Yahushua or Jesus brought to light by asking a question to the people nearby. He simply asked them if they knew that they were gods. Read for yourself. John chapter 10, verse 34. Quote, Jesus replied, Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. Close quote. These scriptures give us evidence of a vision of who we truly are and how we should live. We should live by principles of God. We should embrace the vision of God in us and advance beyond human desires. Our lack of vision and attraction to worldly desires is what keeps us in the animal consciousness. 
However, when we embrace the vision in the scripture and become it, then we can say that we are indeed living the lifestyle of God.